Hey guys, welcome to Christina Cakes It. I'm Christina and today I'm making an Indiana Jones hat cake. So I'm making this cake actually for a very cute reason. Um, my husband is actually an independent film producer and the night, I think it was the night that I met him, he actually told me that the reason that he decided he wanted to make movies was when he was a little boy, he watched Indiana Jones and that was the movie that made him want to make movies. And I always remembered that and I thought it was adorable. And so for this birthday, I decided to make him the iconic Indiana Jones hat cake. So this is a bit of a complicated cake and luckily I actually had a hat that I felt like I could use the design for. So this is my hat. I actually like never wear hats. I don't even know why I have it, but I feel like it's kind of like Indiana Jones hat shaped. And so what I did is I made my own templates using this. I did make a template for the brim. So I traced that out on parchment paper and cut it out. I made a template for the inside of the hat here and I cut that out. This one was a little bit hard to do. Um, you kind of have to like press it down, but you do need that inside oval as well. I made a template for the top of the hat here. You can even see I labeled it top oval so I didn't get confused. Um, and I did the whole oval even though there is like a like what's the word, like a groove in there or like a indentation. So top oval. And then I also made a little template for our center indentation. And I also even made a template for this little side indentation as well. So I take my templates very seriously. So I made all of these ahead of time. I definitely suggest you guys have a hat that you can use as well if you're considering making this cake. The next thing I did after I made all my templates is you can see that I already rolled out the brim with brown fondant. And the reason I did this is because I did want it to dry and I just curled up the edges a little bit and these dried with like a little curve in them. So I did this a day ahead of time using my homemade brown marshmallow fondant. Another tip that you're gonna wanna know when you're making a hat cake, the brim is really large and I actually had to order an extra large cake drum. So this is a 14 inch. Um, you can't move this fondant really after you roll it out and set it to dry. I did learn that the hard way. So you wanna make sure it's on the cake board or cake drum that you're gonna use. I use the cake drum because this cake is going to be pretty heavy and I wanted to make sure that it was supported. So the brim, again, just rolled out with fondant and then I turned up the edges a little bit and I did this a day ahead of time. So the next step of this cake is carving it down. And to get um, the shape that I was gonna use, I used two eight inch layer cakes and one seven inch layer cake. I thought originally it was gonna be four layers tall, but that was too tall. And so I ended up only needing three. And um, this cake is actually gluten-free funfetti because my husband is gluten-free. You know that if, I, if you watch my channel. And I do have a gluten-free funfetti episode if you are interested. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with carving. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to flip this upside down on another cake board. And I'm just gonna use my oval template and carefully carve away. So another thing that's important is this cake is cold. Um, cold cakes are way easier to carve than like a fresh cake. So I actually had this in the freezer and I just set it on the counter for about an hour before I started working with it. So after I carve out the bottom oval, I'm gonna flip it back over to work on the top. So I'm gonna place the top oval template and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carve carefully down to the, the bottom edge so it's like curved out. So 
I can definitely see that the hat shape is coming in and I'm kind of just like eyeballing it and making sure that the shape looks smooth. Luckily, Indiana Jones hat is not like perfect. It's like definitely worn in, so that works in my favor. So now that the basic hat shape is done and I'm happy with it, um, I am going to start working on the indentations, which are probably going to be challenging. And I did like give a crumb coat to this cake. And after doing this, I can see I probably didn't need the frosting on the top at all. Um, if anything, I probably actually got in the way. So what I'm going to do is take my little indentation template and I'm just tracing around it because this actually gets carved away in the middle. And I'm just going to slowly and carefully start digging some of this out. It's almost like, a, like when you're doing a geode cake. So now that I've carved out the top indentation and I can see that it has like a little valley in there, I am going to work on the side indentations and I am going to have to pick a front side for this and for me this is going to be the front and I am going to do the same thing so I have my little template that I traced and I'm just going to go around it and this kind of is at an angle like a little bit of a diagonal. So I'm just gonna trace around and cut away. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. So I'm just tracing around my little template. And I'm just gonna cut away like a very shallow little indentation here. So you can see why it's very important to have the cake cold as you're carving this. If this is a fresh cake, I actually don't think it would work. Or not fresh, if it was just like a soft cake that hadn't been Crumb coated. Don't say that. Take that out. <laughs> so now I have my hat shape all carved out. I'm super happy with how it looks. And the next thing I'm going to need to do is crumb coat this whole thing with frosting. So I'm just going to use some white buttercream to frost the whole cake being really careful to make sure to um, get the indentations like smooth and how I want them because this is gonna have fondant over it. So after I have my initial crumb coat on my hat shape, I'm gonna put this in the fridge for about 20 minutes. I am gonna give it a second coat of buttercream and then I'm gonna let it chill for at least an hour before I cover it with fondant. Okay, so it is about two hours later and my cake got a second coat of frosting and it was in the fridge for about two hours and now it is ready to be covered in fondant. So I did use my homemade marshmallow fondant um, that I dyed brown and this isn't exactly the color that I want but I'm not worried about it because I'm going to end up airbrushing it anyway and I did roll out my fondant off camera because as you guys know if you use fondant it can be a serious arm workout when you're trying to roll it so I did it off camera um, so it is ready to go on my cake.
So this hot shape is really starting to come together. I'm excited and I'm just going through and I'm just kind of smoothing out any of the little rough edges and making sure the shape looks nice. I'm not worried about the bottom at all because I'm gonna cover it with like a little, like Indiana Jones has like a little black um, brim thing around the hat, so not worried about that at all. So now that I have the top of my hat covered in fondant, the next step is to actually move it onto the brim. So I'm just going to use my cake lifter and carefully move this off the cake board. So the next step in my hat is I'm going to want to actually make it like a deeper shade of brown. And I actually was gonna airbrush it and I just went to use my airbrusher and it's broken. So I had to problem solve that and I'm just using a bit of um, brown gel food coloring Americolor um, with a little bit of vodka. And I've used both techniques before. I prefer the airbrush, but this will also work as well. So I'm just gonna give it a thin coating on the whole hat and it's going to give it um, like a weathered, deeper brown look. So my hat is completely painted and I'm pretty happy with how it looks, but I do want this to dry. So I'm gonna let it sit for a while and let all that alcohol evaporate off of it. And then I might actually go back in with some powdered food coloring and shade some more, I'm just not sure. So the cake has been sitting and the paint is dry and it's actually the next day through the magic of editing. And um, one thing I do wanna tell you guys is my airbrusher actually did start working. And so after I painted the cake and I let it dry for a bit, I did go back and give it a little um, coat of airbrushing and I added a little bit of extra in the indentations of the cake to make it more shadowed. So all that's left to do is just a few final details. So I am gonna add a black um, border just along this edge here. And so I'm just gonna use some black fondant and roll out a strip. I think I'm actually probably gonna do two strips um, and just connect them. So I'm just using a ruler so that I get a nice straight edge. carefully put this onto my hat. This might be long enough.
actually fits pretty perfectly. So the final thing that I'm going to do to my Indiana Jones hat is I'm actually going to add letters of my husband's name. So his name is Will. So I'm going to make those out of fondant and I'm using the Indiana Jones writing. So to find this font, all I did was search adventure font and this is what came up. So I'm first going to cut out um, his name in yellow and then I'm going to add some orange with um, powdered orange food coloring. So this is just my own homemade marshmallow fondant that I dyed yellow. So now that I have the letters cut out in yellow, I'm just gonna add some orange with powdered food coloring for that like famous um, like Indiana Jones font or writing. And after I add these letters to the cake, I might actually shade in just a little bit of black shading to make it even more like the Indiana Jones writing. back in and touch up with a little bit of orange, like any spots that need it. And Indiana Jones writing actually has like shading around it with black. So I'm gonna add that in as well. And what I'm doing is I'm just painting with Americolor Super Black. And I didn't even dilute it at all. I'm just painting with Americolor gel food coloring and I didn't dilute this at all with just a very fine paintbrush and I'm carefully brushing this on. So the Indiana Jones hat cake is complete and I absolutely love how this cake turned out and I hope that my husband loves it too. I've actually been making my husband's birthday cake ever since we met seven years ago and this is probably my favorite one that I've created and I hope that you guys love this episode. If you did, don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel. Oh, uh.